why Manchester City and why the Premier League. Playing for Pep Guardiola for the best club in England. I'm not going to teach him how to score goals. One of the most sought after strikers in all of Europe. And he's been talking to Jeff Shreves. Haaland. Erling Haaland. For you, why Manchester City and why the Premier League? In the end, it's about your, how your feeling is. If you want a new job, how you feel thinking you in this job. If you look at my goal, uh, the, the one against Bayern, exactly this I saw in my head in many years. And yeah, what can I say? I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. Me as a young player, uh, playing for Pep Guardiola for the best club in England, I have to get better on a lot of things. Uh, but that's also part of uh, part of the game. Get out of your comfort zone. That's something I've been doing and something I like because then you develop more as a human being as well. The chemistry on the pitch with the other players is. Uh, something that will come, you know. It's also something that we have to build on every single day in training. Uh, Lindbergh Holland, he started his great football adventure here. 24 hours a day, he could practice when he wanted. That is one of the most important parts for, for him, achieving what he has done, because he could practice, practice, practice. He was playing with the older boys, one year older. And you can see that he was uh, already at 13, scoring lots of goals. He was quite small at the time and skinny, so he had to think a lot and make uh, clever movements. He debuted here on Buena on the first team when he was, what, 15, 16? And he obviously didn't have his physique the same way he does now. He always had great finishing, uh, his technique and ability to place himself in good positions, and he still were able to stand out against like grown adults, right? Of course, this is one of the clubs your father played for. Do you view that as, okay, it's just a coincidence, I chose the right club for my career, or is there a part of you who feels, well, I was already part of the family before I arrived? I think it was a bit of a coincidence, of course, uh, but it's nice, you know, it's nice when your father's been playing here, uh, having uh, the jerseys when in my, uh, my room at my mom's home, you know, with that at the back, is a bit special, I have to say. We obviously know who he is because uh, his father, you know, is, is the famous Alfie of Brina. When we watched the younger kids play and he was just scoring for fun, as he is today, so he always had something about him even when he was younger. I'm not going to teach him how to score goals. So mum and dad, his mum and dad uh, give it to him. So I, I'm not going to, only when I do is create as much good football as possible to uh, arrive uh, in these positions uh, close as much as possible to, to score goals. I love every single goal, I have to say. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a tap in, if it's a long shot. Uh, every kind of goal has the good feeling I really like about it. Uh, and this feeling I want to achieve as much as I can. I'm looking forward to, to watch the stadiums first, to feel the atmosphere and the rivalry, you know, uh, us against them, you know, fans against each other. This is also something I like a lot. And also to feel the game, you know, the, the tempo, it's going to be tough, for sure it's going to be tough. And, uh, and this is also the, the charming thing about Premier League. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, hard competition that's, that's, that's why it's the most popular league in the world. It certainly is, and he's all set. So, Sean, you played a little bit with his father. You've watched him in pre-season. What's the level of excitement around City with this fellow? The around? excitement is, is massive. Everybody's like just looking forward and betting on how many goals he's going <laughs> to score this year, to be honest with you. But um, the one thing that stood out to me when I did watch him play against Liverpool is that he's going to have to add something else to his game because City plays slow, controlled... Well, not slow, but controlled football where they want to be in control of the game all the time so they're not as direct to say to say other teams are and he likes to play on the shoulder so there's they still have to learn to play together and how the system's going to work to suit both of them that's an interesting point i mean this is a guy who got 62 goals in 67 league games in germany he knows where the back of the net is 
What is Sean talking about there in terms of a striker and movement and getting the service required? Well, Haaland's stereotypical goal for me, well, there's two types. There's one over the top, powerful runner, finisher, one on one. The other one is he's massive. He's a big guy, crosses into the box, headers. That's how he's, that's his bread and butter over the years. You think about where he's coming now, Manchester City. Apart from Liverpool, and apart from the charity shield, the community shield that we watched uh, the other weekend, there's not going to be any teams that play a high line against Manchester City. That ball over the top that he's galloped onto, that we've watched for, for years and years now, that's pretty null and void, I think. So is the crosses into the box. When do you ever see Manchester City chip a ball high into the box? It's never, it's never done. So he's going to have to find a different way of scoring. Now there will be plenty of opportunities. The goal he scored against in pre-season in, in the US, that's the type of goal he's going to have to score more of. And then you watch him in the community shield. I mean, he's, he's got it all. You know, those little threaded passes, those little cutbacks. He will be in the box. He'll, be, he'll have to be more of a fox in the box to score the numbers that he's always scored in the, in the German league. So I think he's very, very capable, but I do think, as Sean's alluded to, I think he's going to have to tweak his game slightly to get those numbers, but I think he will. I think it might take a little bit of time for him to settle, settle into England. I think even with the manager, y y you think of Pep, he never really wants a number nine, he never really wants that big type of play. He wants to play football, he wants to control games in the middle of the pitch and that's with a lad coming off. You think he did it with Messi at Barcelona, he did it with Sterling and Jesus at times last year. So I think it's going to be very different. Michael makes a, a great point. When teams are playing deep, it's not always the big man who is, who is more suited to that. And as they said, City don't cross the bar. It's, it's them little lively players, them little ones can get half a yard, get turns, beat people. I'm thinking of Sterling, I'm thinking of Jesus. Clearly, they're not there anymore. So they're very different types than Haaland. I, I just don't think he likes playing with a big centre forward. And it'll be interesting to see how they both do. I think it'll take time for both of them to adjust to each other. And when you play a number nine as well, it's all right saying we need someone because they're always going to be in the box. But then you lose that control of the game that, that Sean was alluding to. Manchester City always control a game. Which is what you got one less player because he's obviously. I, th I think he's still capable. City yeah. with the players they've got, they're still capable of controlling games with a centre forward. But that's like his extra insurance exactly. of controlling a game. He's having that centre forward who can come out to deep areas in play and wide players and can go into the centre forward position. So uh, I think it's going to be inter interesting. But I do think it'll take a, a bit of time for both of them to adjust to it. That's kind of why I think they've kept Alvarez and not let him go back on loan again because he plays similar, a similar way to Man City playing as if they have a false yeah. nine or Zoe is a, actually a number nine and his work ethic suits the high press, he's a fox in the box and known for goals as well. Having said that, the amount of chances they created and didn't finish last season and we were sitting in the studio saying there was nobody in the penalty area for City. Surely, as Michael says, if he can adjust, he'll be in that position, the amount of chances they create as a team. Definitely, but like, like Mo said, the friendly, where he scores his first goal, and even a few times in the Liverpool game, as soon as the ball went wide, the first thing he did was dart into the box. And all he, all he was waiting for is somebody to put the ball in there. Not saying he would have scored, but there was a few chances he got in the end off. On a better day, he might have put those away. Yeah. Well, when I look at City last year, I never saw the problem with scoring goals. I always thought in the big games especially, it was, it was the other end conceding them. They score bundles of goals, they'll always score goals with them, the amount of players who are capable of doing it. I don't think a centre forward, OK, an out and out centre forward, a number nine, is going to make that much difference as far as winning the leagues and winning Champions League, which I think Champions League is going to be the ultimate goal for them. But you think, look at the, look at the semi-final, they scored loads of goals, did they score? I can't remember how many goals they scored, but they scored enough goals. Mm. It's the other end where I think City might have more of a problem. It just gives them something very different, doesn't it? Yeah. That's what it gives them. It gives them something very different to what they've not got already. I've no doubt about it, he will be able to adapt to it. But I just think it'll be a different Haaland that we see playing than we've seen in the past. Okay.